modern concept of well-balanced health may be visualized as an equilateral triangle composed of a physical side, a mental side, and a social side. Each of and those who are keeping all sides in balance enjoy good health. But how does one maintain this balance when driven by pressures of our mind? Push, push, rush, rush, drive, drive, go. Push, push, rush, rush, drive, drive, go. Start your day with mounting tension. Watch the clock with apprehension. Off your seat, on your feet. Have to hurry up and meet stresses and strains. To maintain your social status, buy a status apparatus. Bigger car, there you are. Show them how you're going for stresses and strains. Never mind your ills, tranquilize with pills. Give yourself an ulcer over worry over bills. Take a few belts, smoke up a storm. Be an individual, but try to conform. Don't lose sight of your ambition, get ahead of competition. Be obsessed, be the best, have a many times to rest. Some things breathing down your neck. It takes a great deal of pains and lots of stresses and strains. To make a perfect nervous wreck. Unfortunately, anything that affects the mental side of health can also affect the other sides, and eventually the whole triangle. For a better understanding of how this comes about, let us first look at the animals, for man is, after all, an animal too. All animals encounter stresses of various kinds as a normal part of their lives. These may arise from the prospect of losing territory or living space to another species, the need to defend shelter, protect the young, or even having to compete for a mate. Obviously, the greatest stress is a threat to life itself, but for this, nature has provided every animal with certain protective responses, one of the most important of which is the fear instinct. Here's how it works. The moment an animal recognizes danger, the fear instinct instantly calls up every resource of its body, one of two ways to assure survival. Fight or flight. In either case, action is taken and surplus energy is used up. When the danger has passed, the animal settles back to normal quite as if nothing had happened. The fear instinct has done its job, and there are no harmful after effects. Scientists believe that the same protective responses exist in the human animal, arising from an area of the brain called the diencephalon. It's quite as if the fear instinct of our forefathers still lives there, ready to push the panic button. Even in our modern world, this primitive instinct can still save our skins. The instant danger is perceived, the fear instinct gets the message and immediately presses the panic button. In a flash, the total resources of the body are mobilized. Breathing is faster and deeper, and the lungs, by their increased activity, supply more life-giving oxygen to the bloodstream. The liver, one of whose functions is to serve as a storehouse for blood sugar, now releases large amounts of it into the bloodstream for extra energy. The adrenal glands also step up production, pouring out more of their secretion to stimulate the heart muscle, which in turn reacts with a higher rate of pumping. In the digestive organs, certain arteries constrict, decreasing the supply of blood in this region. This makes more blood available to the muscles for fight or flight. And all this happens within a split second. Like any animal, man has, in this case, used up his supercharge of energy in escaping disaster, plus letting it steam. Now he should be able to proceed without any harmful after effects. But unlike other animals, man has more than instinct. He has a superior intellect and a brilliant creative imagination. Unfortunately, this imagination can create unreal dangers and give rise to unnecessary stresses and strains. Take the case of a well-prepared student under pressure. Guess I got it. Yeah. What answers are wrong? Oh, boy. I'm not going to graduate. That means no college. And I won't get the job I want. 
I'll be a bust, a failure. I might not even have a car. This imagined threat instantly alerts the fear instinct, just as if the danger was real. In this case, the danger was not only imaginary, but short-lived, and tension was relaxed. But now let us see what can happen if fear aroused by imaginary dangers continues over a prolonged period. Good morning, J.G. Huh? His boss was merely preoccupied at the moment. Uh-oh. Something's up. He's mad at me. Maybe I'm gonna get fired. Here we go again. And our man is ready for fight or flight. I don't have to take that. I'll hit him right in the nose. Wait a minute. I can't do that. He's my boss. I really would get fired. I've got it. <laughs> I'll quit. What am I saying? I've got obligations. A mortgage, a family to take care of, and, and, and... Obviously, neither fight nor flight makes sense here, so pride is swallowed, along with all the unused biochemicals the body has stirred up. And so our man literally stews in his own juices. Now, if this stressful state of mind based on self-generated fear is carried over into the time for relaxing, it may produce undesirable results. It can destroy rest, interrupt the body's normal rebuilding processes. But even worse, it can bring on a nightmare of psychosomatic ills, meaning ills induced in the body by the mind. For instance, if the arteries in the stomach stay constricted because of a continuous state of alarm, the top layer of the stomach wall will be starved for oxygen. The cells disintegrate, leaving the second layer unprotected. And now the trapped stomach acid can go to work on that second layer. It literally burns its way through. And the result may be peptic ulcer. In another area, there is possible trouble when the liver, triggered by continuous imaginary danger, keeps pouring more and more sugar into the bloodstream. Normally, an organ called the pancreas produces a chemical known as insulin to balance the sugar level in the blood. However, over an extended period, the pancreas usually loses the race, resulting in too much sugar in the bloodstream. Body chemistry is upset, and this may contribute to a host of other ills. The list of self-inflicted tortures is endless, but they do have one end in common. All sides of health can be seriously impaired if fear is constantly aroused unnecessarily. But if this life-saving instinct is permitted to relax when there is no real danger, the body can function as it should. After all, most problems, real or imaginary, are soon resolved, and many situations we first believe to be threatening turn out to be purely imaginary anyway. Good morning, J.G. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, good morning, Harvey, my boy. <laughs> In the triangle of health, using plain common sense is the easiest way to minimize the normal stresses and strains of life and keep all sides in balance. The health of man is like an equilateral triangle, completely dependent on the length and strength of each side.